Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're back at it already. We're gonna do some more tufting. I'm addicted in love. I'm obsessed. Can't get over it. Can't. So I did get some practice in, obviously off camera, and I made this, I'm just gonna show you. It's the cutest little jack-o'-lantern. Okay, so I learned that this word is trivet. Am I saying that correctly? Um, like a something that you put like a hot pot on top of. So yeah, tufted this guy off camera and I absolutely love him. So not perfect, but <laughs> pretty adorable. So what is the next best thing after a jack-o'-lantern? A ghost. If you guessed ghost, you got it correct. So here's my, <laughs> shut up. Here's my sketch. <laughs> of what I want to do. This is the next rug that I want to do and in this video we are going to actually make a rug. We're actually going to tuft like an actual, actual, actual rug <laughs> this time and this is what I want it to look like. I'm just gonna freehand it. So in the future, um, once I evolve further in my tufting journey, we'll probably get like a projector so I can like project the picture on there and then we can like draw it on which will be super cool but what we're gonna start with is like sketching like freehanding some images onto the tufting fabric they're a little a little stars in their eyes ghost look how cute they are we're gonna get started on freehanding this ghost i'm terrified but it's gonna be good it's, it is it's gonna be good all right so as you can see i have already stretched the fabric out onto the framing and i think it's good i've learned that you have to stretch the living crap out of the fabric onto the framing for it to have the best results. Here we go. <laughs> love, love, love the best. There we go. There you guys, so here is like kind of a front view of my ghost and <laughs> there's nothing you could possibly say to convince me not to love uh, this ghost any less. I just, I love this ghost more than anything. I know that there's like a bunch of different lines and you might be like, whoa, whoa why did you draw so many lines? And you can't really see, in fact, you cannot see. Um, like any of your sketched lines once the rug is finished because you're like tufting through it so you don't even see it anyway. Um, so I feel like that's not even gonna matter. So anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow to start tufting. All right, so it is the next day and we're gonna start tufting this freaking ghosty. I'm so excited for them because they are the cutest. Um, so I think what I want to do is probably we'll start with the outside sparkles and then we'll do the sparkles in the eyes and kind of work our way to the bigger sections. Uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to get started and I'm nervous. I'm nervous to mess up the eyes. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Like that looks pretty good. Okay, I feel like that one looks good as well. I feel like they look pretty good together.
So all of the sparkles have been tufted uh, to the best of my ability. They were kind of difficult, but there is kind of like, I don't know, it's a little forgiving because you can literally just, the way that, it, just in case you don't know, the way that the gun works is like, you know, you stick the like sharp part through the fabric and then there's like a pair of scissors. It wraps a piece of yarn around some of the strings on the fabric, cuts it, wraps a piece of yarn, cuts it, wraps a piece of yarn, cuts it. So that's why you have all of these little like cut pieces is because that's what it's doing and that's how it like does the stitches. So since they're just like little cut stitches, you can just pull them right out. So we're gonna move on. So we're gonna start with the eyes. Are you seeing the adorable face of this ghost? I mean, the sparkle eyes. Okay, what we're gonna be doing tomorrow is I'm gonna tuft the white of like their body and then I think this part that's supposed to show like, yeah, you can't even see how important that. Uh, this part, which is supposed to show like the inside of the, the sheet ghost. Um, I think I'm just gonna do black. I will see you guys tomorrow to do some more work on our ghosty. All right, so it is the next day. Sean's off to the side here reading a uh, <laughs> a saw user manual, okay? So we're gonna continue. Somebody gave me a tip on doing lines like this that are kind of like wavy, tuft in like little increments so that you can like kind of turn it. It works! Like if you don't just hold down the trigger and try to do a wavy line, that doesn't work because it kind of like tears at it. But if you like pulse, the trigger and like move it around it freaking works and you get like nice wavy lines and you have more control so i'm gonna go to the bottom here fill this in black and then we'll kind of go from there also look what i got it's a threader a little teeny tiny threader i got like a little box of them these are amazing you like stick it through this tiny hole and you know how a threader works amazing perfect no they're not they're literally not but I, I think it's working I think I have to like fix up here because I didn't I drew so many lines that I didn't know I needed to go all the way up here also I know that my framing is not the best and it like jingle jangles around and that's kind of why I'm getting like I'm gonna call it like kickback sort of I, I don't know this is all I've got right now so I'm making it work Okay, so the black, these lines here, and then this below the little ghosties sheet is filled in. So now we're gonna fill in the white. And I'm hoping that I have enough because I only have one like cone skein of it. Here it is. So anyway, we're gonna get started on the white. some tight freaking lines. Oh my God, look at them. Who's proud? Me. Oh, good. I'm glad that you just punched holes through it instead of being like, hey, the string fell out. Whoa. 
Wow. Oh. Ah! Ah! oh, also, I don't know if this helps for keeping the yarn like threaded. Um, so I have seen the suggestion of like stringing two like strings of the same color through rather than just the one. Um, somebody said that that helps a lot. I want to do it, but I only have one thing of white, so I can't, but I will do that in the future. But for this, we're just gonna have to stick with the one. So with that, I am going to see you guys tomorrow and we'll continue the white. Hopefully tomorrow uh, we'll be able to finish the white and then we'll, we'll go, we'll go from there because we still have to fill in like the outside part of it surrounding like the stars and everything. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. It's the next day. Let's continue. Also, actually before, <laughs> before we get started with today. So the parts where like this piece kind of moves like that. So I did get some sewing machine oil to put on these parts because I was seeing that you're supposed to like get it's basically sewing machine oil to put on to those parts where it like moves a lot so that it moves easier. Also, when I got in this morning, I noticed that this like sharp part was not centered with the foot, which is this piece here, like these two side pieces. And it was more like onto one side and like basically touching one of the feet. So I took one of the tools that they gave me like in, you know, that you get in the package. Uh, and I unscrewed this, which you can, when you do that, you can like move the foot around and I've re-centered it. So now that sharp part where the scissors kind of come out of is not touching either side of the foot. I just wanted to mention that in case anybody else is new and notices that that has happened. You can, and you have like the same gun as me. I don't know if other guns are like kind of designed the same, but uh, that is how I fixed mine. And now we're actually gonna get started. Okay, it is another day. This is the progress that I made. Let me bring in. So on the ghosty's forehead, I did make it to basically like a tiny bit over halfway. Um, and then down here, we're almost halfway through the ghost part. So I don't know. I mean, this is how much yarn I have left. I don't know if it's gonna be enough. We're gonna continue on with the white. have stitched everything else besides this tiny little section that you guys are zoomed in on. Let me show you how much yarn I have left. About this much. So, I mean, y yes. I feel like most of you are like, yeah, girl, you're fine. You're going to make it. But I'm still learning. So, so I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm a little nervous that it that it won't make it, but we'll see. You can see the cardboard through it. Anyway, I'm not nervous. Where this is good, this is fine. Everything's fine. Made it. I literally can't believe that we made it. Like, 
Like I didn't go all the way up to this thick line, but I mean, we made it with like a tiny bit left to like, we, we basically j just barely had enough. I'm probably going to use the rest of this yarn to go back through and like maybe fill in any gaps that we have, but I, I, honestly, I, I can't believe it. Uh, so ghost basically filled in anyway okay we're gonna get started on filling in like around the ghost and around the sparkles and I think I'm gonna go with orange because I have two cones of orange so we're not gonna have this yarn problem again I'll be back to you guys to kind of do the rest Okay, so with that drawn, that is the line that I'm gonna follow with the orange. I've already got it kind of threaded up here, so I'm just gonna thread it into my gun and we're gonna get started. All right, you guys, I've done it. I think our little ghosty, as far as like tufting goes, I think the tufting part of this is done. It looks so cute. I'm like kind of dead over it, it's so adorable. So without further ado, here's the little ghosty rug. I flipped it around so you guys could actually see what the rug side looks like rather than, you know, the back like tufted side. This is my first ever rug. Like, yeah, we did the jack-o'-lantern, but that was like a little, like, kind of like tiny test piece, you know? So next step is I'm gonna flip it back around to the back side again. And what we're gonna do is paint like a pretty generous layer of carpet adhesive. I'm gonna show you guys what I use, uh, but we're gonna paint a whole layer of that on the back side. So we're gonna do that. Oh. And for this layer or this like glue on the back, I'm gonna be wearing my respirator because it does give off like some kind of fumes or something. Uh, so I am gonna be wearing my respirator that has like a full face shield and you know, the filters and everything. So I won't be able to talk during that, but you'll see it. You'll see the action of painting the adhesive on the back. And, and then, and then we're gonna let it dry. <laughs> and I'll see you guys tomorrow to continue the process. Hey guys, so this is the carpet adhesive that I got. I tried to get the Roberts one, could only find Henry. I, let me know if there's a huge difference. Uh, and then this is the little spatula that I got for it. Got both at Ace Hardware. Um, and this is what it looks like. I thought it would be interesting to show you guys what it looks like. And it's just like a big tub of it. You can buy smaller tubs of it, but I obviously got the bigger one. We're just taking our spatula and spread some of this adhesive around the entire back of this rug and uh, like I said I am being generous with it but I'm not like glopping it on uh, but I am also like getting the edges really well and like making sure that everything is completely covered in this stuff All right, so it is the next day and I believe the carpet adhesive should be dry. So I'm going to cut it out, cut our rug out of the fabric and I'm gonna move it over to the desk. I'm gonna get glue in those edges down. Oh, okay. Our rug has been cut out and I've left a little bit of the tufting fabric around the edges because that is what we're going to be gluing down to the back side. And so I'm going to be transferring this to the desk and then we'll go from there. 
All right, so while my hot glue gun is heating up, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do first, which is a little bit of fabric that I left on the edge of the rug. I am going to be cutting into it just every like couple of inches so that when we go to glue it down, I'll be able to like fold this piece down and stick it to the bottom of the rug. That way we're gonna get like a nice rounded edge with the actual tufted part. All right, so now we are cutting away and I am cutting like straight up to where the tufting starts. Uh, and like I said, I am doing just like an inch or two. And I don't know if you'd have to do this for rectangular rugs, but I am doing this just because mine is rounded and it makes it easier to like glue down all the edges. So I am taking my hot glue gun, putting a little bit of glue down, and then I'm just gluing these little flappies down. All right, so we are now on the floor because this is just gonna be too big to like figure out on the desk. So anyway, this is what it all looks like with like the edge um, tufting fabric like glued down. So I do have this like border of the orange like tufted part. So that is when the rug is like laying on the floor, that's what you see, it's like nice and rounded and you don't see like any edges of like the backing or anything. So anyway, we're gonna now glue down, see there's so much glue in this. We're gonna now take the rug like backing that I have. Um, so what I'm gonna do is cut like the exact shape of the rug, but I'm gonna do like the inside of it. So when I cut this, I'm gonna have the like backing go straight up to that orange line where the tufting starts. So for this, I didn't have a special technique, but I did fold the backing over to like try to get the perfect shape. This stuff, don't. Just don't. <laughs> Just don't. Uh, it, it stinks. It smells so bad. I'm obviously wearing my respirator here, but even after this stuff dries, it's smelly but I'm just completely spraying both sides, like the backing and the actual rug itself. I let it get tacky and then I placed the backing on the back of the rug and then pressed it down everywhere. Made sure everything was flat, even though I did get a little pockets where it still lifted up. Anyway, I did press it down as best as I could. All right, you guys, so this is the weirdest angle ever, um, but it is the next day and the backing has been glued on, so I'm gonna flip it over to see the cutie ghost on the other side. Oh my God, it's so adorable. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is kind of just cut and make sure that everything is the same height and no little pieces of yarn are like kind of sticking out. I don't have sheep shears right now, but I do wanna get some at some point, but for now we are gonna go in with just a pair of scissors. You guys so my very first <laughs> my very first tufted rug is finished like completely finished I feel like this has taken so long and I'm so excited are you ready to see it okay here is the reveal of my first rug look at it oh my god it is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Look how cute they are. It just, I can't, I can't get over it. So I love the like, I guess shape of the entire rug just being kind of wavy and weird and different and it just going around the entire thing. I love the ghost face and the eyes. 
the sparkles came out so good. I love the orange. Look how cute it looks. I love literally everything about it. It is the cutest thing in the world. And it's just like it's, I made this. Isn't that weird? Like I made, <laughs> I made a rug. It's just crazy because like I drew this on a piece of paper and then, and then tufted it into a real rug. <laughs> just, it's so weird and amazing. What do you guys think of my very first tufted rug? Because I'm just, like I'm in love with it. So I'm excited to see and hear your thoughts. I definitely learned a lot with tufting this first piece. Like I need to get sheep shears a hundred thousand percent. Um, also definitely going to get two like colors, like two of each color next time so that I can tuft with two strands. Also, I'm taking suggestions for backings because I don't know how I like this. Two, um, please, I'm begging you to give me suggestions on the spray adhesive because this 3M one, I don't even know where it is. The one that I used, it stinks like far after it's dried and it doesn't really hold that well. Like I think I'm going to have to go around and glue, um, quite a bit of the bottom part. So if you have suggestions, let me know. Anyway, I'm so proud of the first the first ever artsy tufted rug <laughs> first ever look at it it's so cute they're the cutest okay i'm gonna shut up so with all of that said thank you guys so much for watching this video i really hope that you enjoyed it if you have any tufting tips tricks i would love to hear them or read them down in the comments and thank you for like letting me do something different and you know, this is entirely different to what the channel was last year um, and I know I've literally not shown up about this, but thank you guys for letting me do this. Thank you for hyping me up about the tufting because you guys are so excited about this and it makes me excited to like share, share it with you. And I don't know, it's something very special and I feel really freaking happy. <laughs> So thank you guys so much. I'm just, I'm just dancing. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me literally everywhere. It is at Artsy Mad Woman. I love you guys to absolute death. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I swear to God, if my cat um, pees on this or pukes on it, I'm like so sad and upset.